Continuing with the Vedic, um, we're ready to look at the mechanism of the reaction. And the mechanism is shown here. Um, I'm going to blow it up a little bit so we could go over it more in detail. All right, so we have an aldehyde ketone, and as you know uh, by now, um, the carbon of the carbonyl is electrophilic uh, because the oxygen is pulling electron density towards it. And we have a nucleophile. And where is a nucleophilic? This carbon right here with the negative charge and a, a lone pair. So the uh, name that's given here, which is yielded, is referring to a compound that has a negative and a positive charge right next to each other. Um, and that's what I called a uh, Vitic reagent. So this is just another name for a Vitic reagent. Um, so then I have the Vitic reagent, or what's called a yielid, um, that is the nucleophile. Where is it going to be attracted to? It's going to be attracted to the um, electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl, so it's going to attack. And when it does the nucleophilic attack, something's got to give, otherwise that carbon would have five bonds. So the double bond all breaks, and it's given to the oxygen, all right? So the intermediate that is um, formed, um, I purposely um, don't have a, a bond here because that's the bond that is being made. So I want you to draw that in. So you, this is where the carbon-carbon bond is formed, okay? And you form this intermediate <clears throat> that is sort of like a yellid, but it's not called a yellid. It's, it's an intermediate that has a well, positive and a negative charge, but they're not next to each other. So this then um, attack the oxygen attacks the uh, phosphorus and it forms this um, oxyphosphatane uh, intermediate and that four member ring intermediate is not stable as you might have guessed uh, being in the four member ring so it decomposes immediately as soon as it forms and the way it decomposes um, is this is where the double bond forms so the two electrons uh, go to um, cc carbon and carbon to make the double bond and then another two electrons uh, go between oxygen and phosphorus to make the um, double bonded uh, oxygen, the triphenylphosphine oxide. All right, so the two products are shown here. The alkene um, plus diester means that you have a, um, the E and D mixture um, and then this is the uh, byproduct. All right, and that is the, um, is the mechanism. So you write down that you get the E and Z mixture, all right? Now, what you want to know is um, now that you kind of know how the double bonded carbon-carbon is formed, um, in doing these reactions, um, where do you get this Vitic uh, reagent? Um, do you buy it? Do you make it? If so, um, how do you make it, all right? So that's where um, the next step is. Uh, is the synthesis of, of Vitic reagents. So um, there's some versatility to the Vitic reagents in that um, the first step is the um, triphenylphosphine attacking the um, alkyl halide. So that is a reaction that you should recognize. So this is my nucleophile, triphenylphosphine. Um, with the lone pair and it's going to be attracted to the carbon that the halogen is attached to. Why? Because that is partially positive so it's going to be attracted to that and when it does that something's got to go and brom bromine as you know is a good leaving group um, so it leaves. What kind of reaction is that? You've seen this before. A nucleophile attacking and something leaving. It's a, a substitution reaction, right? And this is uh, an example of an SN2 type of uh, reaction. This is just a solvent, benzene. 
so then when this happens you get uh, um, in this case uh, methyltryphenol phosphonium bromide so this is a <coughs> uh, first step so you make this in which triphenylphosphine is now attached to the carbon um, in which the um, you're going to make the vitic reagent from <coughs> excuse me so the requirement for the alkyl halide is um, that you want <coughs> it to be either primary or secondary or axis because you're trying to do a substitution reaction. As you know, the tertiary um, is not going to work very well. All right. Now, after you make this via SN2, then what you're going to do is make the nucleophile, all right? And the second step is an acid-base reaction in which this right here is a, is a very, very, very strong base, okay? Because we have a lithiated carbon, uh, and that... Um, is going to be used and the other base that is um, often used um, I think in your book um, and butyl lithium butyl lithium is a, another um, example so that carbon that the lithium is um, not really attached to because carbon is uh, negatively charged and then um, the lithium is positively charged that carbon it's going to go and, and grab the proton off of the carbon that is attached to the uh, triphenylphosphine and in an acid-base reaction. So the base comes and grabs the proton, and the proton uh, is removed as an H+, right? So that bond, one of the bond is going to, the two electrons be going to be given to the um, carbon to form the yield or the vitic reagent. So notice that one of the hydrogen is taken out. Um, that's why it has CH2. It has a lone pair, and then you have a negative charge on that carbon. And this is C6H6 now because it grabbed that extra proton from here to form uh, C6H6, and the byproduct is lithium bromide, right? So this is the Vitic reagent um, that is used in, in Vitic reactions. Or the yield. All right, and that's how you would synthesize um, whatever yield that you would need, okay? Now, <clears throat> your book really doesn't have uh, that many forward problems, um, so that's what I'm having you do in the, uh, in the drill. Um, a lot of these forward problems, how to synthesize um, these Vitic reagents and then re react it, right? Now, because of the second step, having the strong base remove, being able to remove a proton in order to form the nucleophile, the carbon nucleophile, the other requirement um, is that the, um, it must have at least one hydrogen to remove on carbon attached to phosphorus, right? Otherwise, you can't do an acid-base reaction. So therefore, tertiary Rx not only is not going to be favorable doing SN2 reactions, but it's not going to have um, a proton to remove, so these cannot work. And you have to keep that in mind that tertiary alkyl halides cannot work. All right, so I'm going to assume that you um, do these um, four problems, including the, um, the drill problems um, that I have on the next page uh, using this Vidic. And um, I'm going to have you show how you would even uh, synthesize the, um, the Vidic, this, Vidic this Vidic reagent, all right? 
and then do problem 20.51 from your textbook. Um, and then you'll be able to, ready to do some synthesis problems. Um, your book actually goes um, directly to the synthesis problems. Um, so I want you to do these four problems first before you try to do synthesis problems. So um, let's try one here. Let's say I want you to synthesize this um, alkene. So one of the first things you should be able to do is um, you should recognize the functional group, uh, you know, an alkene, and you have to come up with a reaction that produces the, the C double bond C, all right? So Vitic is um, one of the few reactions that directly makes the um, alkenes. The other ways you've learned uh, before um, in 114 is you could do a Grignard reaction and then when you after you do the Grignard reaction you get an alcohol and then after you get the alcohol you could do a dehydration reaction so it'll be a two-step process so now that you know how to do a one-step process let's see if you can use the Vitig to um, make this compound so this is um, to synthesize all right so one, so you're going to try to put this double bond together. One method would be that the left side is what you started with. In other words, you started with that aldehyde with this part being the, um, the Wittig region. So that means this carbon was a nucleophilic carbon. So then that was the one that was attached to a triphenylphosphine and make it into a Vitic reagent. So going forward, you would make this um, Vitic um, product. Another way is a flip of that. What if we started with this um, ketone, and then it, which means that this carbon was what was um, the nucleophilic carbon. And so that was the one that was negatively charged. And um, so that was what was attached to a triphenylphosphine, all right? So these are both acceptable methods of making this. And then your next step would be uh, how you would tell me, how would you have made this Vitic reagent, okay? So then um, you, would have, you would have started with um, triphenylphosphine, Sorry, I'm going to try to finish this up in a minute. Um, triphenylphosphine without the hydrogen uh, removed yet. So then you would need a, a MBO lithium to remove that, a strong base. And how would you have made this? Um, would be from a nucleophilic attack of this with what kind of um, halide? with some kind of um, halide attached to this. Let's use bromide. And so going forward, triphenylphosphine attacks this carbon in a SN2 fashion, removes the BR, forms this intermediate, you use strong base, and remove that proton, and you make the yield. You take the yield, react with the aldehyde, you get the uh, final product. All right, so that concludes this lecture.